Hello and welcome to this brand new complete MongoDB course. My name is Manoj Jha and you are watching Procademy. This is a comprehensive course covering all the concepts of MongoDB development from scratch step by step. This course is designed for both beginners and experienced developers who want to learn or enhance their knowledge of MongoDB database and want to become a MongoDB database developer. Now note that this course is not for MongoDB server administrators. It is out of the scope of this course to cover server administrator concepts. This course is for those students who want to be a MongoDB developer and for those who are already working as a MongoDB developer. In this course, you are going to learn everything about MongoDB database and cover all the important topics of MongoDB which you need to know as a MongoDB developer like the CRUD operations, relationships, indexes, aggregation pipeline, authentication and authorization and many more things. In this lecture, let's understand what MongoDB is and why you should learn MongoDB or choose MongoDB as a database solution for your next project. MongoDB is a bit different than traditional relational database solutions like Microsoft SQL or Oracle or MySQL. So if you are coming from a relational database background, then first you need to understand how MongoDB is different from relational databases. And that's exactly what we are going to cover in this lecture. Along the way, we will also understand what are the advantages of using MongoDB database over traditional relational databases. But before that, let's understand what is MongoDB. MongoDB is a non-relational NoSQL database solution provided by a company which is also known as MongoDB. Apart from MongoDB database, MongoDB company also provides other solutions like cloud-based database service. It also provides tools to connect to and work with MongoDB database and fetch and manipulate data in the MongoDB database. These tools include MongoShell, Compass, etc. And we are also going to talk about these tools and services in this course. All right. Coming to the definition of MongoDB, it is a non-relational NoSQL database solution. Now, what do we mean by that? To understand this definition, let's try to compare MongoDB database with other relational databases and try to understand the difference. Also remember that here, NoSQL stands for not only SQL. The beginners sometimes get confused and they think that NoSQL stands for NoSQL, but it stands for not only SQL. Okay, so remember that MongoDB is a NoSQL database. What do we mean by that? In a relational database like MS SQL, Oracle or MySQL, we use tables to store the data. The data there is stored in rows and columns. For example, here you can see we have a relational database example. There, when we want to store the information related to a customer, we will store it in a table. We are calling this table as customers table. Each table consists of rows and columns. Each row in a table stores the information of a related data. For example, in this customers table, each row is storing the information related to a customer. And each column stores the actual information. For example, if we take the first row, in there we have a customer whose ID is 1, whose name is John, whose gender is male, whose age is 28 and who is from USA. Then the second row here is also storing information about a customer. In this case, the customer name is Mary and she is a female and she is from UK. So each row in the table stores the information about the related data and each column stores the actual information about the related data. For example, name, gender, age, country, etc. So in a relational database, we store the data in a table and each row of that table represents a related data entity. But in non-relational databases like MongoDB, we do not store data in a table. In non-relational database like MongoDB, we store data in a collection. So the collection in MongoDB is equivalent to a table in relational database. And each collection consists of documents which stores the data related to a given entity. So document is equivalent to table rows in relational database. And we will understand about documents in more detail and how they store data in a bit in the same lecture. 
but the point to understand here is that in NoSQL database, we do not use tables to store the data. Instead, we have collections and a collection is a collection of documents. Then in a relational database, you need to define the structure of your tables upfront, including the types of the data each column can hold. This is called as schema. And this schema is then used to enforce data integrity and consistency. For example, let's say in this customer's table, I want to insert a new document where I want to insert the name, age and country of the customer. I don't know the gender of the customer, so I cannot insert it. But in a relational database, even if you don't know the value of a field, for that field, you will have to give some value. You cannot insert a document without specifying a value for all of the fields. Now, for those fields for which you don't know a value, you can store null like we are doing here. But still, you will have to specify that you want to store this null value for that field for which you don't know what value to insert. So either you can specify null value explicitly while executing the SQL command or you can set a default value for a field so that if for that field no value is specified, the default value will be used. But you have to provide the value for each of the fields, each of the columns in the table. Then only the data will be inserted. So in relational database, the schema of the table is used to enforce data integrity and consistency. But that is not the case in non-relational database. In a non-relational database like MongoDB, where we are storing the data using documents, in those documents, you don't need to have the same number of fields and same type of fields. Two documents can have completely different fields and different number of fields. For example, here, if you see the first document, there we are storing the gender of the customer. But in the second document, I have not specified the gender of the customer. And that is completely okay. Here, we are not going to get any error in MongoDB. So in MongoDB, you do not have a predefined schema for the documents. Documents can have different structures even within the same collection. This means that you can add or remove fields as needed without having to modify the entire schema. You can have two or more documents with different number of fields and different type of fields. And MongoDB will not complain about that. Another difference between relational database and a non-relational database like MongoDB is in relational database, we normalize data by creating relation between two or more tables. And this provides data consistency, reduces redundancy and provides data integrity. And this is the base of a relational database. So in this example, if you see, we have the employee table and this employee table is related to the department table and gender table. In the employee table, instead of storing the department related information directly, we have the department related information in another table and we are referencing that department table from the employee table using the foreign key primary key relationship. Okay. Similarly, we also have this gender table where we are storing all the genders and wherever we want to use one of the gender values in this employee table, there instead of specifying the gender directly, we are simply referring to this gender table. And in this way, we have a relation between the employee and the gender table also. And the advantage of this approach is that since we have relation between tables in a relational database, we have less or no redundant data. But the disadvantage is in order to fetch proper data from the table, for example, if I want to fetch data from the employee table, where instead of displaying the gender ID, I want to display the actual gender of the employee. And instead of simply displaying the department ID, I want to show the actual department name and who is the manager of that department in the result. So to fetch this desired result, we will have to query multiple tables and that is performance intensive. So this is one disadvantage of having relation between two or more tables. On the other hand, in MongoDB database, we may or may not have relation between two collections. It's not mandatory to implement relationship between two collections in MongoDB. We can do that 
but MongoDB does not enforce us to do that. And that's why we say that MongoDB is a non-relational database because MongoDB does not enforce us to create relation between two or more different collections. We can store the data related to another entity in the same document. For example, in this employees collection, if you see, we have some employee documents. Each employee document has a name, name of the employee, gender of the employee, age of the employee. And in the same employee document, we are also storing the department related information. In the relational database, we were storing the department related information in a separate table. And we were referring that department table from the employees table. But in here, in the employee documents, we are storing the department related information in the same employee document. So in this way, in MongoDB, we can store two related data in one of the same collections. And the advantage here is that if we want to fetch the related data, we will have to query a single collection and that will be faster. So to summarize, in both relational database as well as in non-relational database, we have database at the top. Then in the relational database, we have tables, but in non-relational database, we have collections. A table consists of rows and columns. A collection is a collection of documents. In relational database, each table row represents a related data entity. In non-relational database, each document represents a related data entity. So relational databases stores data in a table in rows and columns. Each row represents a data entity and each column stores an information for that data entity. In relational database, each table has a predefined schema and while inserting data in a table, we have to follow the schema. A table can have related data stored in other tables with primary key foreign key relation and it reduces data redundancy. But in MongoDB database, MongoDB database stores data in a collection. Each collection is a collection of documents which stores data in the form of key value pair. This key value pair is called as field. In MongoDB database, there is no predefined schema. Two or more documents can have different fields and different number of fields. We can also define a schema on the collection if required. In MongoDB, we can store related data in the same document and this makes querying related data faster. But it might also lead to redundant data. So I hope now it is clear to you how non-relational database like MongoDB is different from relational database and how MongoDB stores data. In MongoDB, we store data in a collection using documents. Each document in a collection represents a data entity. So let's talk about documents a little bit more. As we learned earlier, the data in MongoDB is stored in a document of a collection. A document is a JSON-like object which stores related data as a key value pair. As you can see here, we have the customer's collection and in that collection, we have three documents. And how this document is storing the data? It is storing the data using a JSON-like format. So in JSON objects also, we have key value pairs. Each key is wrapped within double quotes. And for those keys, we specify some values. Those values can be a numeric value, a string value, a Boolean value, etc. So in documents also, the information related to a data is stored like JSON object. Now, the documents of a collection does not have to follow a strict schema. In MongoDB, collections are schemaless and you can store data in any way. The data can have different fields and a single field in two different documents can store values of different types. In this example, if you see, in the first document, we have underscore ID field, name, gender, age, address, and order field. But in the second document, we do not have the order field. And that is completely okay. MongoDB will not complain about that. If you see the third document, there we have the address field and order field, but we do not have the gender field. So since the collections in MongoDB are schema-less. It does not enforce a predefined schema. We can have any field or any number of field in a document in the same collection. The advantage of having a schema-less collection is 
in the future based on the requirement you can add new fields to the documents without having to worry about changing or recreating your collection also we can store the related data of a document in the same document and this makes querying related data faster for example if you see in the first document where we have this orders field it is storing an array and in that array we are storing the order related information this document here the outer document it represents a customer it represents the customer name the gender of the customer the age of the customer the address of the customer etc and it is also storing the information of what orders that customer has made so the order related data for that customer is stored in same document and this is possible in mongodb so we can store related data of a document in the same document and also remember that the document consists of key value pair so for example here name is the key and this value john is its value the gender is the key and this value male is its value age is the key and 28th is its value so this key value pair is called as fields a document consists of fields and a field consists of key value pairs all right so this was a very high level overview of what mongodb is and how it is different from traditional relational databases we also talked about the advantages the mongodb provides over traditional relational databases now as we will move along with this course you will learn more and more about mongodb databases and its features but this was a very high level overview of what mongodb is and what are its advantages now in the next lecture we are going to download and install mongodb on our local development machine and i'm going to show you how to do it step by step in the next lecture and then we are going to use that local installation of mongodb for this course this is all from this lecture if you have any questions from this lecture then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day